Hello my dear students, uh, we start a new chapter from physics that is motion which is a very interesting chapter. Students before uh, starting this chapter I want to share one thing that normally up to 8th class there is no division of physics, chemistry and biology in your science book. Only one science book is there but when you reach to class 9 there is a division of physics, chemistry, and biology. The concept is given. And when the term or the chapter physics came to my mind, then some students they think that physics is a very tough and very difficult subject. But students, I am telling you, physics is a very easy and interesting subject. Only thing you have to do that you have to take interest in that subject you have to understand the basic concepts inside the physics and use this concept for solving the miracles so what you have to do now you have to watch the video very carefully understand the concepts and use it for solving the numericals so let's start the chapter more Okay, so you know the students, uh, all the objects around you are of two states. Either they are state of rest or they are state of motion. It means, uh, I can say, either they are resting object or stationary object and the object which has state of motion can be called as moving object in simple language ok so the objects either they are resting object or they are moving object then question is there how can you know that object is moving or it is at rest what we do that if it is a resting or stationary object, normally we compare the position of the object with time. So if I say that uh, the board, the position of this board with me is the distance between the board and me is same with time. Means if I am standing here and the position of the board is not changing with time then I can say the board is a resting or a stationary object it is state of rest similarly if we switch off the fan the blade of the fan starts to move the position of the blade changes with time with compared to me then I can say the object is at moving. So when the object is in motion or whether it is a moving object, then what you have to do, you have to compare with a reference point. So what is the meaning of this reference point? Okay, to clear about it, I will give another example to you. Okay. Uh, think that uh, you are sitting in the train with your friend and your friend is sitting just opposite to you. Okay, the train is at the station. After some time, that train starts very slowly. Okay, now the train is moving. If you are comparing your distance with your friend, so the distance is not changing your position is not changing with compared to your friend so we can say that both of you are at rest okay because your position is not changing with time but if you look through the window and if you compare your position to a tree then you will find the position is changing means you are moving so you are not a resting object at that time, you are a moving object. 
so that is why when an object is at rest or motion you have to compare the position of the object with time with compared to a stationary object that is taken as a reference point so what i am telling the body is said to be in motion means it is a moving object you can call it if its position changes with time first point in compared to a stationary object you have to compare the position from the stationary object as i told the tree outside the tree taken as reference point then only you can say the object is moving okay so this is the concept of motion okay then the uh, sometimes normally we use in physics the physical quantities they are called physical quantities like uh, mass weight distance so all the physical quantities physical quantities normally we use in physics different terms all the physical quantities are divided into two category one is called vector quantity and another is called scalar quantity what is the difference between them the vector quantity and scalar quantity you see the physical quantity which has both magnitude and direction the physical quantity which has both magnitude and direction is called vector quantity but scalar quantity has only magnitude no direction then question is there what is magnitude what is direction again i will explain you with an example for example uh this is a table okay one table is there you are applying the force say you are applying 100 newton force when i say that 100 newton force is applied on it 100 newton newton is the uh, si unit of force okay the 100 newton force is applied on the object but question comes when you are applying the force 100 newton then this 100 newton force should have one direction means either you have to apply force in this direction or opposite to this direction or this direction or this direction so 100 newton force can be applied in any direction so whenever you are applying 100 newton force you have to mention the direction that whether it is towards east or towards west or towards north towards south you have to mention one direction so in that force 100 newton for example we are applying the 100 newtons towards this is east if i will tell that the force of 100 newton is applied towards east so force has now two things this 100 this is magnitude and towards east is direction 
Okay, so I can say force is a vector quantity because it has both magnitude as well as direction. Okay, so the quantities which have both magnitude and direction they are called vector quantity. So some of the physical quantities when you mention that physical quantity you have to mention the magnitude and also you have to mention the direction. We will take another example. Say time. Okay. If I ask the, what is the time now? So one will say that uh, it is say 7.20 pm. Okay. So in this you see that when you are expressing the time you are only mentioning the magnitude. You are not mentioning that direction. You will not tell that uh, it is 7.20 pm towards north or towards east. Okay. You will only mention that it is say 7.28 pm like that. So the number you are telling that is the magnitude. It has no direction. So simply I can say that time is an example of scalar quantity because it has magnitude but no direction is there. So, so other physical quantities are also there which has only magnitude, no direction is there. That's why they are categorized into scalar quantity. So I think student understood what is the difference between the vector and scalar quantity. Both uh, the physical quantity which have both magnitude and direction they are called vector quantity and the physical quantities which have only magnitude no direction they are called scalar quantity. So we can write some example here like as I told force okay similarly you can say uh, displacement acceleration these are vector quantity we will discuss displacement acceleration uh, in the coming session these are actually vector quantity and scalar quantity if you write example time distance speed etc okay so distance also is a scalar quantity because if i ask uh, what is the distance between these two points for example here point a this is the point b if i ask what is the distance between them you will say it is say uh, 20 centimeter so the 20 centimeter is magnitude okay the 20 centimeter is magnitude so it has only magnitude no direction hence the distance is a scalar quantity okay uh, we will discuss more here uh, now we will discuss one by one some physical quantities so let's start from distance what is the distance actually how can you define distance uh, for example you see as i have told this is the point a and this is point b okay so the point a and b is the place and when you are moving from A to B, the path is maybe like this. It may be like this. So two path is there. Okay. I'm not telling the straight path. For example, this is the place A. This is the place B. And this is the path. If you are moving from A to B, either moving to this path and either you can cover this or move to place B through this path. So when you are comparing that you are moving from this path, if you will measure the length from here to here, the length is say 3 kilometers. Okay. 
so the three kilometer is the distance because you are moving along this path so I can define the distance as the actual length of the path covered by the moving object is called distance. It means if you are moving from here to here, the actual length means you are moving from this path and the actual length of the path is 3 km. Hence, it is called distance. So, I can say the distance is here. Distance of AB is 3 km. Okay. But if I will compare another physical quantity that is displacement what will be the displacement actually so distance the actual length of the path which is covered by the moving object is called distance whereas displacement is the shortest path that is straight path or sorry shortest distance the shortest distance between the initial and final position of the moving object is called displacement listen carefully student the shortest distance between the initial and final position of the moving object is called displacement if i will compare that the path is this path is there but this three kilometer is the distance if you find out the displacement then we have to find out the shortest distance between the initial position and final position starting point and finishing point you have to make a straight line because straight line is the shortest distance between two points so the, the straight line and if we we'll find out the distance of it for example it will be say 2 km so 2 km will be the displacement here here it is distance is distance of AB is 3 km but displacement will be AB is 2 km here in this diagram so I will take another example here say uh, an object A point it moves towards this you know this is north south there it is uh, the object is moving say 2 km towards north then it is moving towards east 5 km then it is moving again 2 km towards south ok the object moves like this 
so this is the point P, then it is C and D. So again, then I am telling the example the A from point A, the object moved 2 km towards north and reaches at point B. From B, it again moves towards east 5 km and reaches C. From C, again it moves towards south by 2 km and reaches at the point D. In this case, if I will find out what is the distance covered by the object, here distance is the actual length of the path covered by the object. So the object is moving from A to B, B to C, C to D. So if you add all the, all the length of this path, then I can say the distance traveled is 2 km plus 5 km plus 2 km. Equal to 9 km. So the 9 km is the distance traveled. But if it is asked what is displacement here, then the displacement is the shortest distance between the initial and final position. This is the initial position is A, the final position is D. The shortest distance is always a straight path. So I can say the straight path between A to D is displacement. So here displacement is AD. The distance of AD will be the displacement because it is the shortest distance between initial point A, final point D. So the it is a rectangle, you know, this is 2 km, this is 2 km, this is 5 km and this should be also 5 km. The, the length of AD will be 5 km. So here the distance is covered by the object is 9 km but displacement is 5 km. This is the difference between distance and displacement. Another difference is there the distance is a 